Greetings from Southern California. This is another Partner that we are proud to host by Global Summits Institute. My name is Dr. Emily Letran. I am a speaker and high performance coach and dentist, been practicing for more than 28 years with two multi specialty group practices in Southern California. Uh, this morning, I have the privilege of um, interviewing one of our colleagues from uh, medicine. But first, before I introduce him, I just want to take a couple of moments to introduce you to our new program, which um, Dr. Morris is also a part of, the Doctorate of Healthcare Business Program that we are launching. And um, I'm gonna just share my screen real quick. So this is a program called Doctorate of Healthcare Business. And this is an effort between different uh, areas in, in healthcare. We got medicine, pharmacy, dentistry, philosophy, optometry, chiropractic. And our goal is to work together in what we call the doctor to doctor movement. So we can collaborate, help each other overcome challenges. We realize that uh, even though we're in different verticals, we actually have many, many similar problems and we have to deal with similar issues. And what better way is than, you know, to come together, to uh, put our thoughts together, to share our resources and our insights. So every one of us can enjoy a better life, a fulfilled life, which is what uh, our professional life should be all about. I'm going to play a quick video and it just highlights our program. And um, the program has three different tracks. Um, you just saw the highlight of all the different faculties. The faculties come from all across the globe, from Europe, from Asia. And these are faculties who have practices, professional practices who are teaching in university, who are dealing with corporation like uh, Dr. John Cryack from pharmacy. So we represent a broad range of experience, more than, uh, more than, I think, close to 300 years of experience that we are coming to share with you. The three tracks that we, that we set up, one is financial. It, it would be your personal finance, debt management, cash flow, uh, going on to investment, how to be innovative. The business administration are your systems, your business systems. How do you talk to patients? How do you do marketing? Um, how do you collaborate with other doctors? And then the research track is learning 
um, to look at a particular problem, writing up a thesis, um, defending a thesis, and that will give you the experience to uh, be part of the academics. Uh, you could be teaching in school, uh, which is a lot of time that a lot of doctors consider that when they are, um, you know, a couple of decades into, into their career and also working with corporation. Uh, each of the year is marked by semesters and each of the class is four weeks long. And here's a, an example of year one, where you see two tracks running concurrently between finance and business administration. We have scholarship opportunities. We understand that uh, some of us are, are busy. We got, we got to put our kids through college. We got uh, to go on some of those vacations. Uh, we got to expand our practice. We're investing in our business. And so there are opportunities to apply for scholarship. You can just go to our uh, website. I, I mentioned the website in just a moment. Here's a, another quick picture of our faculty that were highlighted in that video. You can see uh, the flags from all over the world, even with the ones who are uh, from America, uh, you can also see that we come from different backgrounds. And we, this morning, we actually are just launching a book called Doctor to Doctor Success Strategies, Elevating Your Business and Personal Life. Uh, we would love for you to, uh, to buy the book, read all of these insights of success and some failures uh, from, you know, leaders like Dr. Edward Zuckerberg, the, the father of Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, Dr. Kevon Javid. He holds multiple certificates. He has multiple program, programs teaching surgeries. Um, obviously, Dr. Morris here, he actually shared how to deal with challenges, right? <laughs> Working with your spouse, because some of us do. Uh, and and um, so we would love for you to, to pick up the book. You can go to drhb.org. <clears throat> And that's where you can check out all the details of the, of the Doctorate of Healthcare business, business Program, all the highlights of the doctors. There's some representative of um, the syllabi that we'll be teaching. And um, there's also a place where you can ask for financing, in-house financing, third-party financing, um, scholarship, and schedule a meeting for more information. So now it is my absolute honor to introduce our speaker today, uh, Dr. Believe it or not, I have not met Dr. Morris in person, <laughs> uh, but I feel like we know each other. Uh, you know, Dr. Morris is an international, uh, is an internal medicine physician. He's practicing in Tucson, Arizona in the United States for over a decade, and he shared his practice with his wife. He's a father of two boys. He enjoys martial arts, sports, and travel with his family. His area of expertise are in acute and chronic disease management of adults. Uh, he has a large focus on preventative side of healthcare. He takes pride in being able to engage his patients on an individual level, and he builds treatment plans that are very specific to their personal health issues. Uh, his uh, de decision to go to medical school, his why, right? What was filled by seeing his family deal with their own health issues. And I think a lot of time, a lot of us go into healthcare with that personal story. And then we mm -hmm. find out that there's some challenges, right? And so it, it, it's very important to have our why very clear to drive us uh, forwards. In the, in the past few years, his interests have grown to include, <clears throat> excuse me, personal development coaching for physicians and other professionals who, look, who are looking to take their career and their life to a more elevated level. And I am certainly very honored to be a co, um, a, fel a, a colleague of Dr. Morris in this other endeavor, um, being a certified high performance coach. So I'm sure at some point we're gonna be together in our live training that happened yearly. Dr. We Morris, will. welcome to the show this morning. Ah, oh, thank you very, very much, Emily. And you're right, we haven't met in person as yet. <laughs> We've had tons of these conversations through, well, the world has gone Zoom crazy over the last 18 months. So uh, I'm sure we would have met sometime last year if travel was legal. But now, now that travel is becoming more and more legal, I'm sure we're going to meet sometime this year for sure uh, and, 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 and have a good long embrace, a good hug, you know? Yeah. Cause, uh, <laughs> 
I want to say the book that just came out, I, uh, it was my pleasure to at least to author one of those chapters in the book, um, just basically giving my experience in, in, in healthcare, you know, being in practice with my, my spouse, which, you know, a lot of us, like you said, a lot of us do do, but um, it can be challenging at times because you have two dominant personalities running a business, which whether you're married or not, you know, it's, it, it, it's something that you should definitely you know, um, 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 think about when starting a business. I'm not, I'm not shy away from, you know, I mean, it's, it's uh, everything has challenges, but being able to tackle it head on. And, and uh, when you read my chapter, you see how I deal with the actual um, 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 dynamic of being husband and wife team in a, in a practice. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, that, and that's where the doctor to doctor movement is so important because, you know, you're in the, in the practice of medicine, internal medicine, mm -hmm. and, and I'm in dentistry. And so some people may just say, you know, they, they, they don't really have much in common, except for the years of, you know, going to school. But when we look at it, like you, like you just said, practicing with a spouse, uh, mm -hmm. practicing with two dominant um, personalities, uh, basically a, a little clashing in personality or maybe mm -hmm. a little challenge in, you know, maybe a d different philosophy. Um, those, mm -hmm. are, those are universal challenge. And even though we're in separate fields per se, we have that, we have those same challenges. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that's why I love the doctors and doctor movement. And I love the book that we just, that we just uh, finished oh, yeah. because we have all of these doctors, everybody's busy. So instead of trying to write a book, let's write a chapter. Let's give, let's give others um, your golden nugget, your insight, so they can just learn about your decades of experience in just, in just a couple of pages, right? Because I think what makes, what's most important is what's the outcome, right? Yes. What, what's in it for me? If I read this book, <clears throat> what mm -hmm. am I going to get? And mm -hmm. you're going to get tons of experience because like I said, um, several of those doctors are our faculty members and mm -hmm. um, you're going to get hundreds, hundreds of years of experience um, being shared in there. Now in your, in your practice, you're practicing with your wife. Do you, yes. do you both show up at the same time? No. <laughs> <laughs> we we do we do but the, the 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 funny thing is we our our practices are yes they run side by side but you know how busy a practice can get whether you're in medicine dentistry chiropractic you know, whatever it is you're in in the healthcare industry you're busy seeing patients so we we spend most of the times passing each other in the hallway saying hey what's up hey you know and just kind of going from room to room seeing patients and and ideally in an eight hour period, I probably see, I we probably connect and, 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 and have like a sit down where we're in the same spot for the same time, because we share an office, right. maybe an hour out of the entire day. That's just because we're, we're just that busy moving from room to room, you know, right. doing, doing different things, whether it's procedures or patient counseling, whatever it is, you know, in that, that our day-to-day -day, um, um, practice life, or oh, she has meetings, then I have meetings, you know, because I mean, we do have different interests, you know, within within the actual um, 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 field of medicine. So yeah, we see each other when we get to work. Uh, uh, we actually drive separate vehicles, which is which is odd because we go to the same place, but our schedules are different too, because then she leaves early to go to meetings elsewhere and or I would do the same or I would stay late. So, but, uh, okay. but yeah, but it's, 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 it's definitely, you see a lot less than people think. People are, uh, I mean, our patients always ask, doesn't it get boring when you're with your wife all day? I'm like, I'll be honest with you. I don't get to see, I don't see my wife all day like how you would think because we literally are moving from room to room to room and putting out fires here, patient fires there. So it's, it's, it, it, it's been nice. And we've been working like this for literally over a decade. And, and it's not, it hasn't changed the, the, the dynamic of our, our relationship in any way negatively. Because you, if when you're in, you, you you know how busy it can get, Emily. You you don't right, see people. Yes. You know, yes. phones are ringing, patients are calling, procedures need to be done. Right, right. Well, I mean, congratulations on surviving that long. <laughs> 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 um, well, let me let me ask you this, and and this yeah. is something that kind of plague you know the mm. the healthcare industry. I yes. I think because you know in, in the high performance coaching and and mm -hmm. oh, yes. the same is we tend to take stuff home, mm -hmm. you know, the, the worries, mm -hmm. the stress, mm -hmm. um, the complaints, mm -hmm. the, the sharing, and obviously, you know, in, in your case, you got two practitioners, right? But let's mm -hmm. say in my case, 
I'm the owner. I got associate dentist with me. I'm not, mm. I'm not complaining to the associate dentist. So sometimes back in the days, right, when I first started, I may go home and I'm sitting at dinner and I'm telling my husband, Mary didn't come in today and this, mm. and, you know, and then he would say, well, should send them to HR. I'm like, yeah, I'm HR, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I sending people to? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Right. That's true. Right. Because he's an engineer and he works in a mm. company and they have all those branches. So between you and your wife, do you bring stuff home? And if actually, you do, actually, how do you deal with that? Yeah. So actually, we, I mean, of course, depending on how stressful the day was or, or I, I would say on what big project we have going, stuff always gets to come back home. I mean, I have yet to meet someone who has a work, who, who works even for themselves or with a company and, and, and can say that they've never brought anything home. Stuff comes home, you know? What, what, what my wife and I have decided to do is we do try to make sure we, we take care of the majority of stuff at the office. And then when we come home, be present for our sons because we have two boys. And I mean, the last thing you want is, is, is for your boys to kind of to kind of see, you know, you guys huff puffing about something that was happening in the office. And because it, 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 we already spend more time at work than we do at home. Because I mean, let's face it, you wake up early, well, we wake up early in the morning, you're up at seven, you're out at 7.30, you don't get home till six, you know, that's the whole day of you not being physically in the house. And, and you and I both know when it comes to, when it comes to, 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 to recharging or, 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 or keeping your, your relationships healthy, you want to have that separation. You know, you want to have that, 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 um, that time where I'm leaving the office and I'm heading home. Okay, I'm going home. Okay, that's, that, 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 that's a shift change. That's a change in what your thinking should be. That's a change in your mood. And we're in control of all that. I mean, I mean yes, the day sucked because Mr. S Mr. Jones showed up 15 minutes late, threw off the schedule, and then everyone was late after that. People were yelling in the hallway. You know, I mean, you have those days, but the idea is to, to take, a, take, a, take a breath before you step into the house and, and recognize what you're stepping into. You're stepping into an environment that's safe. You're stepping into an environment that you have created as a safe space for your family. So bringing in all that negativity really doesn't help. So we do our best, you know, not to let that stuff trickle into the house because, I mean, we don't, we don't get to see our son as much as we would like as it is. So I just don't want, you, you don't want them to, to feed off that negative energy from the day, you know? Right, so, right. Yeah, so we, well, that, I think, we do. We kind of, we kind of, um, uh, what we call uh, manage our feelings and our emotions and say, and even when we drive, like, let's say we drive home, we, and we have in separate vehicles, we, we do the phone call thing. So we call each other on the way back and say, hey, what's up? What's going on? Even if we didn't get to see each other much and say, hey, and then kind of almost have like a, a mini, I would say um, a debrief session on the way home. So that way in the car, it's a 15 minute ride. You knock out all the big things there. And then when you get home, there's nothing else to talk about work-wise. You're done. Very cool. Um, if I could advise you, I think you should just stay five minutes late and <clears throat> knock those out in the office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we when do, you get into do. the car, in the car, you just have a nice, easy drive home. No, I got yeah. you. I got yeah. you. I got you. You just have and, a and, nice, easy drive home, only dealing with traffic. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you see, you're different. You see, I, I know in, 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 in you, guys, you guys actually have traffic. In Tucson, we don't. We, 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 I mean, because I, I, I'm from, I, I trained in New Jersey. So I, 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 I did my residency there, internship there. So my wife and I both trained at the same hospital. So we know what traffic is. I mean, but people, I mean, but in Tucson, not much, not much. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice, easy drive, but I know, I know LA can be tough with the traffic, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's great chatting with you. Like I, yes. said, like I said, sometime when we get together and we, we take a moment to talk to our colleagues, we find out that we have a lot of the same issues, a lot of the same mm -hmm. challenge. And mm -hmm. something that you do, and maybe I don't do, I could just, you know, I can pick it up. Right. Yeah, of course. Um, and, and, and vice versa. And, and because we don't have to come up with every answer. Um, yeah. Actually, we should not try to come up with every answer. And I know you're, you're one of the faculty of the Doctorate of Healthcare Business Program. You, uh, you're going to teach a, a whole class on social media. And I really appreciate you taking the time today. You're going to share a little bit of highlights of what you'll be yes. teaching. So um, please go ahead. The floor is yours and you can uh, share your screen. 
All righty. Thank you very much, Emily. And let me just get, let me just power things up here. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, bear with me. Where is it? Alrighty. So, uh, like uh, like Dr. Latran said, uh, my name is Dr. Morris, and I am one of the faculty at the DHB. Uh, my 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 topic I've been entrusted with is the dealing with social media, and uh, for the healthcare business and and for healthcare in general. So this is a short presentation, basically a teaser of to uh, of 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 what you know you can experience during the talk uh, during my my lecture series as part of the DHB. So we're going to do social media. You know what the docs should know, um, and uh, let's get started. So who am I? I know you heard from from coach from uh, Dr. Latran that you know I'm a physician. I'm practicing in Tucson. Ten years with my wife. We share practice, uh, but I am also a couple of these things. So here's a couple. Here's one post from one of my social media accounts. You know, so in my practice, we deal with um, healthy living and weight management. My wife and I are both board certified in obesity medicine. So uh, here's one of the posts that I put out as, as you know, just, just to kind of engage my, 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 my patients, you know, followers, people who have met me yet, but who are interested in what I do, just to give them a, a, a glimpse. Uh, here's another one, you know, kind of a, more on the, on, on the light, you know, on the lighter side, levity side, dealing with physical fitness. So I do uh, do martial arts, but I've also began to fall in love with boxing. So I've, I've began doing some boxing training myself. So that's me getting getting uh, wiped out by my <laughs> by my coach because it was a particularly stressful session with him that day. And here's another funny one that I did. You know where you know I kind of uh, mirrored. Everyone knows who the guy on the other side is. Uh, you know who the the Rock Dwayne Johnson. So I just I just got a unicorn shirt that mirrored his. I was like, you know what? Let me see who wore it best. And I kind of put that out on my um on my on my uh, social media feed uh, and 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 it, it, it went pretty well people loved it and then here's another one from another one of my social media um, um accounts just basically once again dealing with uh, you know healthy eating and healthy living so these are just a few examples of of of, of posts or, or 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 content that i have created for my different platforms that i use so when we're thinking of social media uh, you know, I, you know, tongue in cheek, I, 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 I dare to call it the anti-social media, because if we think about it nowadays, I mean, we don't really communicate as we would 20, 30 years ago. I mean, everyone has their devices in their hand. I mean, come on, there's not one person not who doesn't have one of these things, you know, in that's always attached to their bodies, like a, like an appendage. So I figured let's, let's start off and, and, and look at the history of, of, of social media, so to speak. Okay. So the actual, it began, social media began a lot earlier than we realized. If you think about it, let's look at the telegraph. This was actually the beginning of social media because what exactly is social media? Social media is basically being able to communicate with others uh, and socializing through means apart from using actual face-to-face -face speech, obviously. So the telegraph was the first one, a bunch of dots and dashes that were tapped out. And this was actually in 1844. So, so you can see back then it probably would have been hard to do a smiley face on a, on a, on a, on a, on a telegraph, but this was one of the first forms of, of, of media uh, back in the day. Now, as time progressed in the 1980s to 90s, we did see the internet, you know, kind of, sh uh, kind of begin to show and grow uh, through services like, you know, AOL. Who doesn't remember AOL? Well, maybe if you're born before the year 1990. Uh, sorry, after the internet, yes, but uh, but most of us remember AOL the online. You know, it was it was the big one, one of the big players back in the day, All right? And actually, this with the advent of the internet, this led to one of the first recognizable social media sites called Six Degrees, which is actually interesting. I had to research this on myself because I didn't even know it was a thing. And this was they created in 1997, and it it was one of the first ones that enabled you to be able to have a profile and pictures, and you could you know uh, make friends online. Then in 1999, that's when you know blogging began to pick up steam and became popular. You know, and and, and you would see this. The, this led to the explosion of social media. You know, sites like MySpace and LinkedIn, which is still 
you know, present LinkedIn, you know, and it's also gaining more prominence now. It began in the early 2000s. You know, there's also Photo Bucket and Flickr. You know, those were the ones that kind of were more in the in the realm of online photo sharing. They started that, and then YouTube actually came out in 05. And YouTube was changed the game, so to speak, with regards to allowing us to have video content, which is which is which is pretty cool. More in the history we see as we come now to the 2000s and, and and beyond. You know, Facebook, which is still the gorilla in the room, the the the, the big one in the room, um, nearing. I think at this point we are closing on two billion users worldwide. You know, uh, and it was launched by you know everyone knows Mark Zuckerberg. Then in 05, Reddit was not, is not a popular one that was launched by these two gentlemen here, Huffman and Ohanian. And this was more of a news sharing platform, or is, sorry, more of a news sharing platform. And they do have 300 million users uh, worldwide, you know. This was followed by Twitter in 06. Uh, and, and everyone knows Twitter. Twitter is, you know, that uh, it's called a microblogging site because you get to get your message out in 140 characters or less. And, um, and it's also definitely still, on, still, still a, a big player in the social media um, 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 world. In 2010, Instagram became a thing and actually got bought out by Facebook in 2012. Uh, smart move by Facebook, by the way. Um, and it started off as a photo sharing site where you could, you know, it was more visual content in terms of pictures that you would post. And just to kind of gain engagement and get people to begin to comment and 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 be a part of your story. 2010 also saw the rise of Pinterest. I mean, those of you who are in the crafting world, you you know what Pinterest is, and it's basically uh, the idea came from uh, this app developer uh, uh, Ben Silverman was to have a visual uh, pin board where you could post things on. Snapchat was in 2011. It's one of the more newer ones on the scene. And it actually is, it's pretty much popular with the, the, the millennials and Gen Zs, that particular age group. And, you know, it's, it's video sharing, but very short form, short form video content uh, and uh, with, with tons of effects and, and filters they call, just to kind of make the pictures a bit more edgy or just to kind of engage people more than just having a, 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 a single picture that's not very, you know, that doesn't have any more added things to it. So it, it was, it's, it's one of the pretty cool ones. TikTok came out in 2016 and, and it's actually uh, founded by a Chinese company called ByteDance. And, and TikTok is actually gaining significant popularity now. Once again, it is seen more in the millennials and Gen Zs, but it is actually crossing and you're seeing a lot more usage in the, uh, the older age groups, as well as businesses are tapping into the TikTok market to reach that particular group of, uh, of, of consumers. You know, uh, as early as 2020, I mean, they had 800 million users worldwide. And you can see how quickly you, you're looking at being created in 2016 to 2020 and your usership had grown from pretty much zero to 800 million in four years. That just tells you how powerful social media is, you know, you know these days. And in 2020, we saw Clubhouse. Now Clubhouse is kind of one of the new kids on the block that uh, came out last year. And it is an invitation only social media app. It's on both platforms, whether you're iOS or your Android. And it's basically a way to communicate using voice chat rooms. So it's, it's live. And what happens is, you know, based on the topic or the room, the nature of the room, you know, people are invited and you go in and you can go and share your, and share your, your opinions, you know, discuss strategies for different businesses. Uh, it's actually one of the up and coming ones and it is gaining popularity as well. However, it is an invitation only one. The other ones basically you just have to log in, create an account and boom, you're antisocial. So I did want to kind of just look at, you know, uh, some data that I got from Maryville University uh, on, on social media and, and you can Google and you can see all this information is out there. But why I did this is to kind of show those of us who are in the business world, and let's face it, medicine, whether you're medicine, dentistry, chiropractic, you know, uh, uh, a PhD philosopher, you know, or even, even, even in the pharmacy world, you, you do need to understand some level of what social media is and what it can do for you and your business, you know, because everything in medicine is a business. So looking at the 72% of US adults uh, use social media, that's a lot. That's a lot. 
If you look at Facebook, 69% of adults are on Facebook. Uh, you look at the bottom one here, the ghost, the ghost uh, in the yellow, that is actually Snapchat. And 73% of US adults are on Snapchat. Um, in the top corner, everyone knows that YouTube logo. So uh, the trend is there. You're definitely more than 50% of people are on social media at this point, which, which tells you how powerful this tool can be. When we think of that, let's think of, you can't think of business without think of, you know, digital advertising, which is important. So back in the day, we all knew we had to do what? Call the radio station or the magazine, you know, or, or even the newspaper and kind of, that's how you would actually get your message out there by doing ads and leveraging those, you know, traditional forms of media. But what we've seen, look at that from 2018, and I know this number has grown to, to even higher, higher now, the online revenue, uh, basically using social media pretty much to market your business uh, was $107.5 billion in revenue. That is insane. And when you look at that compared to more traditional means, like magazine at the bottom at 20 billion and newspaper, I mean, that's, that's impressive. That just shows you the power of these tools. So one could argue, why would anyone who is in a business, whether it be in the industry of medicine or otherwise, not want to tap into this resource to be able to take their business to the next level. So it's important for us to definitely know these numbers. So I put this here just to kind of show, you know, those of us who are still on the fence about social media, hey, you know what, maybe, maybe, maybe we should look into it. You know, maybe we should. All right. So what do the studies say? So these are a couple studies that I was able to find. And honestly, now with, with the advent of social media, there are lots of these um, 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 studies being done by some pretty good medical journals about the impact of social media. Okay, just the first one, the dangers and opportunities for social media in medicine. That was actually a pretty, a pretty interesting one that I read. And I just have an excerpt here from it where you know empowering users to post content that is public, rapidly indexed and searchable to a global audience has had profound consequences for individual privacy. So that's a big concern. Everyone is worried about privacy, which is, which is true. But at the same time, we have to remember that, you know, in order to be able to, to garner more followers or to get more, get more noticed or to grow your business, you have to allow for some level of, of, of openness out there in, in, in the social space. Not a lot, but some, you know. Uh, looking at the next one, a social media a review and tutorial of applications in medicine for, and healthcare. So this particular article, what they surmised at the end of it is that the role of social media in the medical and healthcare sectors is far reaching. And we know that, we know that. Now you can be sitting in California at your dental practice or me in your medical practice here in, 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 in Tucson, and you can literally reach everyone in the country who is a follower or who can actually, who have the potential of seeing what you have to say versus putting it in, let's just say uh, a magazine. Magazines reach maybe 200,000, 100,000, you know, uh, um, subscription um, holders. But with social media, your reach just got hugely extended. So now what the article did say is by following the guidelines that they presented, the, the pro professionals have a starting point to engage with social media in a safe and ethical manner. It all boils down to this. Uh, when, when you're in the practice or the business of medicine, I mean, you still have to conduct yourself in a way that is, that is you know, upright and, 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 and people are gonna want to, to get information from you. So, so that's key. So there is ethics in, in, in social media uh, engagement, which we have to abide by. And this last one I, I excerpt is from Social Media and Oncology. Uh, this is from uh, Seminars and Oncology um, um, Journal back in 2015. And the authors uh, surmised that we so they did support the use of contemporary platforms like Twitter and Facebook for physicians to establish themselves as trustworthy online sources of medical knowledge. And that is so important. And this is not a big reason why I am of the opinion that physicians, uh, dentists, anyone who is who has gone through training, who understands the science, who knows really what we're talking about, we do need to be have some level of, of skin in the game with regards to social media because there's a lot of false narratives out there. There's a lot of, and I see it all the time uh, through my social media feed where, you know, an influencer, so to speak, or, 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 or someone puts something out there that really isn't medically sound, but it's out there. 
And, and now because it's free speech, we have to be the ones to kind of out those fires because believe it or not, patients are gonna come back to you and say, and, 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 and regurgitate what they heard online. So it's key for us to kind of at least have some knowledge or, or have some presence, sorry, in the social media space to be able to combat a lot of that misinformation and uh, quote unquote, uh, actually disinformation that's out there that patients are being exposed to. I mean, it's, I, I just think it's, it, it's part of what we do, we're trained to do to help, but it, does, it, it can do two things for us. One, help remove some of that, that um, bad information and two, elevate the physician to a status of, uh, of a thought leader, which is, which is a, a, good, a good place to be. So with all that information, you know, you see all the actual social media uh, um, uh, outlets out there. And it makes you wonder, okay, okay, what do I do now? How do I get started? And I'll admit when I first got into or was looking at social media, it was quite confusing, you know, but I mean, there are a couple of simple things you can do. Uh, and we'll start, so tips for better socializing. So let's, let's get started here. So the first thing you wanna do is to create great content. I mean, no matter which platform you use, it's important to create content that catches the attention uh, of, the, of, of the audience you're looking to draw to your business. You're more likely to, to click on something, you yourself, uh, that, that has a great image or something that is visually appealing that draws you to it, you know, it, whether it be a picture or a video, you know, and something, and you wanna make sure whatever you do on, on online or whatever or, or whichever social media um, 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 outlet you use, it's smartphone accessible. You want to make sure it's it's it, people can get it because let's face it, more and more people are are moving away from the, the big computers and everyone is now on their smartphones. So you want to be where the eyes are, especially uh, for a business. You know you want to be where the eyeballs are. You follow them, okay. Another thing uh, that you need to do is you need to build relationships. Your goal is to build real relationships with people in your community. Now I say real relationships tongue in cheek because let's face it, on social media, a lot of times you don't get to, to physically see or have actual verbal conversations with those who are following you on whichever platform it is that you're using to build your brand and build your message. But at the same time, there is a level of connection. So whatever you do, you wanna make sure that you're engaging with, with your public uh, frequently and appropriately. You, know, you, wanna, you wanna make sure that you, you appreciate when people like what you do or even comment on things that you're posting and you wanna keep that engagement with them. You wanna respond. You wanna be able to, to, to give advice and, and, and do that. You wanna you know, help them and, and create that, that um, that feeling that someone does care or you do care about what they think when they respond to something that you post, you know? And you definitely wanna listen, you know? Uh, people who follow you, follow you for one reason, they like what you do, you know, whatever it is. And they will be critical of certain things you do. You wanna see what those are and you wanna take those critiques and you kind of want to analyze and see, okay, good. What can I do to increase engagement? What can I do to make this more appealing to my viewers? You know, or that last thing I did, oof, didn't go so well. You know, and and and, and the good news is with a lot of the big social media outlets, there are a lot of background, background um, analytics that happens to kind of let you know, okay, that last post only got, and this is arbitrary, only got 15 clicks, but the post before it got 300 likes, you know, and then, oh, okay, then you can look and see, okay, what was different about that one? Oh, that was the one I did myself of me actual talking versus this other one I did, which is a, someone else in a picture form. So maybe I should do more of that kind of content. So it, it listening to your followers is key in order to help you grow. You know, it, it, it will help provide solutions where needed. And, and, and you can also thank a happy customer, you know, and, and that'll actually give them more confidence. And you can actually turn people into brand ambassadors. Because when they see, you know what, when I engaged with Doc XYZ, you know, he responded or she responded and I liked that. So then people become lovers of your brand. Because I mean, we all have brands that we like, let's face it, because, you know, we like the, the, the way the companies run or we, the, we love the products the company puts out. Very, very, very important to listen to what your followers are saying, verbal and nonverbal. And you want to be online because you want to build your brand. 
everyone knows Coca-Cola. Everyone knows McDonald's. Everyone knows Starbucks. You, we all know their logos because they have built a brand. Each of those companies have built a brand for themselves. And let's face it, even in medicine, you are building your own brand. Whether your brand is internal medicine like me or obesity medicine, or my wife aesthetics, or Dr. Latran, who was who is the host here, dentistry. I mean, we all have our brand that we want to build, and 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 you want to make sure that you're being authentic in your social media when you're building your brand. You know, you want to focus on making a lasting impression with genuine content. Now, I say genuine because you know people are looking for that. People people don't want the fake. They want to see you know as much as you would put out there of you, you know, and have that connection with you. And the more you do that, if you go with your grain, don't go against your grain of who you are, the content creation becomes much and much, much more easy, much easier to do because then you're living your truth. You know, you're putting out there who you are and that creates a brand for you. And people do like to follow brands because when they realize that this is, this is what you're about, I like what you're about, you've kept it genuine, they'll keep on coming back to see more of what you have to put out. Now you should definitely consider paying for advertising. So majority of social media obviously is free, you know, being able to put out there and it's a good thing it's free now because if you think about it, if you go back a couple of slides when I showed you the revenue that was generated from online marketing, you know, a lot of that was free. I mean, you could, you, you doing a post, get someone engaged in your business, then they begin to do some more digging and they find out, you know, I loved what he did on when he talked about um, carbohydrates, I really have a tough time with that. Where is he located? Oh, he's in my neighborhood. Okay, you know what? Let me make an appointment to go and see him. And that's just free advertising, just using the post themselves. Now you can go one step further and you could pay for advertising, which compared to paying for like traditional media is a fraction of the cost and the reach is greater. So that's, if, and that's not a big reason for anyone who's a small business. And let's face it, like I, said, I will say this over and over again, medicine is a small business. If you're in your, in your practice, you have to get the message out. You know? uh, so consider paying for advertising because it, it will definitely help grow your business and your reach. And you want to pay attention. You want to watch and see. So listen to your followers, but you want to watch how people are sharing your content. Because once you put your content out there, others will begin to use it. And you can see, you know, and is it being used more frequently, you know, for, for, for paid advertising? People are using your stuff for that. Or, or they're sharing it to their friends. They're sharing it to their pages, which have even larger followings. That's important, too. Because now you can tailor your message, you know, and, and say, okay, good. This group really likes what I do. So now you can focus and, 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 and kind of target that group and say, hey, you know, and, and make links that way and say, hey, you know what, this is what I'm doing. Here's where I'm at and, and, and grow your message and grow your brand as well. And you definitely want to share, 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 share. Sharing is basically when, 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 when you post something, you want to make sure that it reaches other people as well and not keeping your, your awesome ideas to yourself. And to add to sharing, I would say engaging. Uh, a lot of times, you know, when you're, when someone posts something that you, that jives with you or, or someone posts something that you realize is, is skewed in a way where it's, it's, it's not beneficial to them based on, and I'm talking from a, a, a medical standpoint, it's good to kind of put in a post and say, Hey, you know what, you know, based on guidelines, you know, the recommendation, I would recommend this and this and this, or it would be better to do X, you know, uh, and, 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 and just kind of building that in the actual post does help because people begin to see that you're actually interested in what they have to say and you're, 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 in, you're invested in, in things being better for them. So it's important to not only share, but to stay engaged and increase your engagement in social media, especially with customers as well as other like-minded physicians or, 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 or professionals, because we're all in this space together and we can all benefit from each other, helping each other grow each other's brand. So, so this is a, 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 a small, you know, a small uh, look at basically what, um, what you'll be learning from with me as we go through the social media course. But I definitely want to, you know, give a brief history. Uh, I wanted to actually, you know, the last couple of slides where we talked about how to improve your socializing 
a, just a small touch of what we do. And this is how to contact me. I did throw in my Instagram handle and my Facebook page. You know, these are my business ones, obviously. Uh, so that way you can get in touch. We can talk, exchange ideas. I'd love to connect with those who want to connect with me uh, because I believe that, you know, even though we're all our own tiny business, we can actually help each other out grow with ideas, you know, uh, uh, with connecting and also with engaging on each other's social media feeds. Thank you. All righty, Emily. Wow, wow, wow. That was, uh, <clears throat> that was awesome sharing. And I want to, um, I want to touch on a couple of things. Yes. So um, I love it that you say, hear me again, medicine is a small business, right? I think, unfortunately, in this modern age, there's still a lot of um, our colleagues, and, and I'm talking about, you know, across all different verticals, mm -hmm. um, who think that because they are specialists, in, in this case, there are a lot of medical doctors who are specialists. I think in, in the dentistry, the majority of us are still gener generalists. Um, but there are some of us who think, oh, because I'm a specialist, uh, you know, the, the generalists are going to refer to me, the general doctors. So I don't have to worry about the patients kind of thing, right? And there are two ways to look at it. it you you got to, as a specialist, and the reason I'm saying this is because I have clients who are specialists, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I would tell her, you actually have two sets of clients. is your patients and it's your referring doctor. Yes. Right? And so now it's, it's actually it's a little harder, <laughs> you know, because now you got to answer to both. If you're a general dentist, you, your main concern is just the patients. Mm -hmm. And so when, and, and I love it when you say, you know, put the, put the social media out there um, you, to carry your brand. What we um, are joining with the brand of Global Summits Institute here, it's a perfect example, right? Mm -hmm. We, you got your thing, I got my thing, but we are collaborating yep. for the brand and the brand um, is doctor to doctor, do one, learn one, teach one. So when we all agree that, okay, that's the brand, that's the mission, that's what we're striving for, it's a lot easier to put out those content, right? Because imagine you're going to put out something on medicine, and I'm going to put out something in dentistry, and then we just pretty soon people are going to be, okay, what are they doing? But what we consistently put out is yes. these are stuff that go across for doctors and doctors. These, are, these might be the concern in the healthcare in general. Um, if some of our, um, uh, the, some of the people who are watching, if they have the chance to watch the Hex Commission meetings, um, where we have doctor, dentist, chiropractor, pharmacy, um, on their mm -hmm. philosophy, uh, we we bring all of these different views in, and and we share it through social media, right? Through this yeah. same platform where yeah. anybody can watch. So um, I think you touch on th those are very very valid points, and I think they're great reminders because everybody, when you tell them social media is important, they're gonna say, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, right? And and then you go and you look at what they do with their social media, and maybe mm -hmm. they haven't they haven't leveraged. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, it's 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 to your point, and 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 I'll always say this to my physician colleagues, you know, whether you're, it's a business. I'm I'm sorry, medicine is a business, and because without the patients, without the patients, the clients, you wouldn't be able to keep the lights on, and 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 honestly, we've seen a shift. You know, back in the day, 30 years ago, it was what word of mouth, right? It was referral. Oh yes, doctor so and so is great. Now, it's not uncommon. For patients to come in to see me for the first time and the first thing they'll say is i looked you up online that's the first thing they would say to me you know what i'm here because i looked you up online and i'm like oh okay yeah and and they can go so far as to diving into like um like the arizona medical board you know are there any board actions against me and thankfully thank god there's none <laughs> <laughs> but but this is the thing the information is out there you know, and people are becoming, they are becoming more and more tech savvy. And, I, and, and Emily, I'm talking about my 80 somethings who have smartphones. Those, those patients in, their, in the eighth decade of life who, who are online and they will literally say, you know what, I looked you up online and I compared you to all the other doctors around 
and I did. I, I love your message. I love what you're doing. I want to see you, and that's where it's going. Just a, a, a five um, about five years ago, I was I was part of a different group, and we were trying to get our website up and running, right? And I remember being in a meeting with them, with the with the other docs, and and they were older docs. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, and. And, and I was like, you know, okay, so what are we doing with, at that time, what are we doing with our social, with our social media? You know, what are we doing? You know, is the, do we have a Facebook group? Are we doing something? You know, because, and then one of the docs said to me, I mean, why, why would we do all that? I'm like, well, you know, to, and, and, I, and I think it was to, to, to get more patients and get more and get more patients involved and get more patients in. And then the response to me was, wait, are you hurting for patients? And I, and, and I, I wasn't, but I was like, no, I'm not. But the point is, I never want to be hurting for patients. You know, you want to be in, in my head, I was thinking you want to be a thought leader out there in the space where, yes, your panel is full, but everyone is banging on the door to get in because, oh my gosh, I love what you're doing, Dr. Latran. I mean, your video on how to properly floss, I, it, it sounded, it sounds stupid, but I didn't know. And or the consequences of not flossing, or the consequences of not following up, the consequences of a, of a root canal left untreated, or, you know, I, I didn't know, you know, and, and this is when patients begin to see that, okay, you are a thought leader in the space, and they look you up, and you have the credentials to back it up, so I, I do believe that, that we are a small business, and and, 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 and it may be a little bit of conspiracy theory on my part, but I do think that a lot of us go through dentistry medicine training without getting that proper training in business by grand design. Because when you're done residency, where do you end up? In an employed position. And as far as I'm, as far as the way I see it is no, 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 no. Physicians and dentists, you know, and, and, and chiropractors, you know, we optometrists, we're small businesses, guys. We, we are the ones in charge. If we don't see people, corporations don't get paid. And that's what we have to remember. And we, once we become our own corporations, you know, that autonomy is life changing. It is stressful. I'm not going to say it's easy. It is stressful, you know, worrying about ex, um, payroll and those things. But I think we do need to have that stress in order to grow. You know, if we don't yeah. have that pressure, we don't create the diamonds that, that are our legacy, you know, so yeah. we need to be to that. Yeah, well, you know, I was going to say, um, and, and it's great that you, you brought up the point of people looking you up on uh, your reviews, because mm -hmm. my, my next partner in about two hours is going to be on that. It, we are talking about, um, you know, the reviews, actually it's in an hour, mm -hmm. I think, the reviews and how people are going to look at you. But, yeah. you know, for me, I look at social media a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I look at social media, and, and that's, a, that's a cool thing about social media is to use it whatever, whichever way you want, right? Yeah. I, I like to use it to show my personal side. Mm -hmm. Right. I think I think if people want to look you up uh, as a as a professional, they're going to go to your website. And mm -hmm. by the way, as you were saying that it brought up one of my pet peeves. There are still a lot of docs out there that don't have a freaking website. Right. Yep. I I go and I look them up and it says health grade, whatever. Or, yes, you know, and I, and I go, wait a minute, I, because it doesn't even. I, you could be in a group, but you could have a personal website. Yes, you can. Yes. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Even if mm -hmm. it's just your profile, but at least, exactly. you know, it, it shows you as who yeah. you are. Even on and, a site, have a, have a landing page for yourself, you know? Right. Right. Those are, right. Those are cheap. Those are cheap and easy to create. Right. Right. And, and like I said, sometimes when I'm, when I see whatever doctor posts something, let's say on LinkedIn, I go and I look them up and then wait a minute, where, where's the website? Right. And, or, Maybe it's outdated or whatever, but on the, so, so I think people go and look you up there first, yeah. you know, your website, and then they may go to social media and yeah, you could have those videos on there or you could show your, your personal stuff. Oh, I go to this class. Um, I'm part of the faculty of DHB, right? Whatever you want to, whatever you choose to show them. And it doesn't have to be all positive because sometimes mm -hmm. you may say, do they have a really stressful day? Because the patient come in and the patient say this and this and this. And, you know, in my experience, if whatever, you know, I, I mean, I have mm -hmm. patients, patients who come in and say, um, I'm not sure what insurance I have. And I'm looking and we're looking at them. Okay. 
<laughs> is it my job to figure it out? Is it, is it, is it, uh, right? Am I supposed to, am I supposed to know that? For you? Yeah, yeah. And and I I remember a consultant years ago. He he said, and it's a joke, but he said, yeah. So you should look the patient in the eye, and you should say, okay, let me file a claim to all the insurances, and then we'll see which one paid, right? <laughs> but but sometimes they would come in and they would say, I work for L.A. County, um, you know, unified or LA Unified School District or School something. District. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there there are certain uh, websites that will allow you to kind of look up and kind of guesstimate on what, you know, what the patient, which part the patient, uh, what insurance the patient may have. But my my point here is, you know, when a, so if, if you allow, if we allow something like that to happen and then and then there's, there's a negative outcome, the patient get upset, you know, you didn't tell me I had to have all this, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes you can take that negative or that challenge and you share it on social media, right? Mm -hmm. So then from a patient point of view, they go, oh, she's human. She has problem. Um, I'm glad that when I come in, I bring all my stuff. So I don't cause this kind of stress in their office, right? So you can, you can I'm, I'm not saying to manipulate, but you can, mm -hmm intentionally put out what you want people to see. Yeah. Um, things that you don't want to deal with, you put mm -hmm. it out there. This is not a good idea to go to the dentist or go to the doctor and not have all your all your information. It's um, education, you're right. It's, 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 edu right. it's educating your public or your clientele right. on mm -hmm. the do's and don'ts, which is important, you know? You right, know? right, right. But in this case, it's not even clinical. But my, my point is, as, as you sharing that, they can see you as a mm -hmm. person, right? Like a pros, um, a new patient, a prospective patient, they can say, "Oh, sounds like this doctor will tend to explain stuff." So I think I like that, right? Versus, okay, my last, uh, you know, people come in and say, "Well, my last doctor only saw me for I don't know how many minutes," or mm -hmm. "My last doctor didn't want to, didn't spend the time listening to me," whatever, whatever it is. But if we take the time to, let's say, do a video. For example, take take twenty minutes and do ten one minute video, mm -hmm. just little little mm -hmm. advice, and yeah. then just have just have your staff put it out there on on the different social media platforms. Um, it tells people that you care without you yeah. saying it, right? So that's what yeah. I like about social media is, is to to show you as um, as a person, and I'm sure you have tons of examples and, and strategies um, in your course where you're going to be. Where you're going to be sharing that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And 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 I, I should have mentioned it. It is it is a lot of work, but you're right. You don't have to be the one to do all of that. You don't. That's where a team comes into place because if you are the 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 the, the CEO of your practice, you're running and doing all that stuff to add social media to the plate. I agree. That's going to be a lot, but you don't have to be doing that stuff. There's processes you can set in place. There are actually a lot of really good companies out there that will actually work with you, build your content, obviously your, your genuine content and post and put it out there for you. you know, it's still your face. It's still your ideas. It's still your narrative, you know? Yeah, and, and to your point, yes, we should be mixing the serious with the fun because people don't always want to hear this, 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 this. They want to see, you know, they want to see every now and then, like let's say you walking your dog. They want to see, you know, a picture of your puppy. You know, they want to see, um, you know, a place you'd love to visit. You know, you know, they, they, they want to see those kinds of things as well because that increases, that also tells them, okay, I guess you do have other things doing besides medicine, besides dentistry, besides, you know, optometry or chiropractic or pharmacy or, or you know, or, or, or philosophy. You do have other other interests and oh I will I want to go there too and that creates more engagement and then the and then the, the public feels like they know you better you know so it, it, it's important I think it, I think it's a great tool you know but I, yes. I, I, I I do think we need to obviously be careful how we use it and still maintain some level of professionalism because you know you know what you, you know that what, what, what they say right once you post it on social media it never yeah. goes away <laughs> It's there for life. So, you know, and that's something I have actually, you know, talked to my staff about, and I've actually spoken to, 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 to my own family, uh, my younger siblings about it and say, hey, you know what, if you're going to post something, make sure you want it to stay there forever. 
because even if you delete it, I can guarantee you it's still out there, you know? So just be very careful because nowadays as a business, I will look people up. If I'm going to hire somebody, I will go online and see what their social media posts are like. And if, if it doesn't jive with the narrative and the feel of my practice, that's where I make my decisions. So when someone sends in their CV, I look them up. Let me see, what is this person about? And if I see a bunch of hateful stuff or things that are not, like I said, congruent with who I am and my practice is, then that's an easy way to lose checkpoints on the interview process. You know, right, so. right. And, and, and going with that, I mean, it's just like anything in life, right? If you're very clear in what your values are yes. um, and what you stand up for, if, if you post something that is very, is true to your heart, and people are attacking you or whatever, um, if it's true to you, if it's congruent with you, then you you just, you ignore yep. it, right? Yeah, you exactly. ignore it. Exactly. And, it, and it's much easier to, um, <clears throat> to, to ignore something like that if mm -hmm. it's congruent uh, to you. I wanna share a really, a really funny story. Uh, so years ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe six, seven years at least ago, Mm -hmm. uh, just when we just got into Facebook and things. Yes. So I, so I decided I'm going to do a Facebook Live. And here comes an older patient. I think she was, I don't know, in her 80s. I don't remember. But she's been with me for many years. But she sat in the chair and I started telling her, we're going to do a Facebook Live. And she go, what do you mean? What is it? <laughs> so I said, okay, so here, here's the phone. And you and I, we're looking at it. And you see how these are, these are the comments that people are commenting, right? And, and so she's looking at it and I said, so you've been with us for many, many years. And, you know, I, I moved a couple of times in the community mm. and you follow. So, mm. uh, you know, you, you must like us. So would you refer your friend and family to us? Mm. And she goes, no. <laughs> and, I, and I'm thinking, crap. Right? Oh, no. What, what, here, what did here, I do wrong? Here, here we are on Facebook Live. <laughs> And I said, what do you mean? And she said, they are dead. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, so uh, well, my advice there is, you know, make sure <laughs> before you ask the question, you, can, you should pretty much know the answer exactly. before you ask oh the question, right? I, mean, I learned my lesson. It was funny though, because she got, she got the straight face and she said, yep. no, nope. they're dead. Nope. They, they're all dead now. You know? <laughs> well, I, I don't, I don't want to see the dead anyway. So that, exactly. that, works, that yeah, that works out well. Uh, but you don't play with it, right? This, yeah. this social media thing, play mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, be, and I mean, be... I mean, I mean, the advice I'd give is if you're green to it, start off with one. Don't try right. to spread yourself too thin and, oh, um, I want to have, analyze your audience, see who the majority of people are in your particular practice or in your field or scope around and see, and, 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 and you can Google and find out. And if you know in your area, Facebook is the big thing, then you may want to kind of go down that road. If in your area, Instagram is a big thing, then you want to go down that road. If in your area, Gen Zs and millennials are the ones who kind of come to you more, then maybe look at TikTok or Snapchat. Instagram as well. Um, but, but, but this is how you want to you wanna kind of figure out where, where you want to land. And it, honestly, and also I forgot, you know, LinkedIn is pretty big too. So if your, if your services are more professional based and you want to tap into that particular market, LinkedIn and LinkedIn even has lives as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of growth in the social media space. Um, but the, the, the key thing is just start, you know, just, just start. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be beautifully curated content. We just want it to be genuine and we just want it to be real. You know, the first couple of things I did on, on, on social media, they, they looked kind of grainy. And now as, as, as life has progressed, I've gotten a better camera. I've gotten, uh, my phone is better. I, I've, I've done my reading. I know, okay, good. This is when I should post, when I shouldn't post. I mean, and all those things come with time. But the idea is to begin to get comfortable with the media, begin to get comfortable with using it. Because I'll tell you, Emily, it's not going away. I don't see magically you know, social media disappearing. It's here to stay. So we could either go against tidal wave or we could just get on our surfboards and ride with it and flourish with it because I don't see it going away anytime soon. Yeah, well, that, that's great advice because I, I know there are people who still think that 
you know, social media is a waste of time kind of thing. And I and I think it's it all, if you understand what it is, then um, you leverage it. Yes. You, you know, you don't you don't have to advertise. You you put it out there, and there are gonna be some eyeballs on it. And mm -hmm. if you put if you post something that is funny or something that is interesting, or even if you're not posting a whole lot and you're sharing, right? If you post great things, and I just decide to share your your mm -hmm. post because I think whatever your <clears throat> Whatever your posting is relevant to yes. my patients or my followers, I can just simply share your thing. And then down the line, you may see that and you start sharing my thing. So it's all about leveraging and just putting yourself out there so that the more people know you, the better. Yes. So, yeah. Well, you know what? I really appreciate you taking the time, your busy time to come out. I know sometimes when we hold these meetings, it would be, uh, you know, you, you're being scrubbed and, you know, we got to end this meeting on time because I got patience because, <laughs> because, because we all have our obligations, right? Yes, we do. But, yes, we do. But, but again, we're making time for like this social media because mm -hmm. we have the message to, yeah. to share and mm -hmm. we believe in it. And so we, we would love for all of our um, the people who are, who are following us to join us in the Doctorate of Healthcare Business Program. You can go to drhb.org to find out all the information, apply for a scholarship, uh, check out the the um, the curriculum and all that. And uh, so Dr. Morris, once again, if people wanna reach out to you and ask you for questions or guidance on social media, can you give me that um, contact info again? Yes, so um, my contact email is g-e-m-o-r-r-i-s-m-d at gmail.com. That's the, that's the, uh, and then of course, uh, my Instagram is AMG Fit DOCS, AMG Fit Docs, and uh, and then my my Facebook page, my business is AMG Weight Loss Wellness. That's us. So just kind of, I mean, you can message me there. I mean, I, I post um, pretty regularly, um, so it's it's a good idea. And going back to the DHB, I think it's a great program. I am honored to be a part of it. I think this is going to help physicians. And I'm talking from a medical standpoint right now, as a, as, as a medicine person, we don't get the business training that we deserve to be able to be able to function on our own. And having this particular, you know, innovative type of program be created, I think if you are 15 years in practice, 20 years in practice, five years in practice, or about to go into and leave residency and start life, this is a good program for you to take on. It's all virtual you know, and you can learn so much from a lot of these industry leaders and worldwide uh, uh, lecturers about the, what they've done. Let's face it. If you want to, if you, you want to be able to live life off of someone else's mistakes, so to speak, right? And not make the same ones that we made. Because I know I've made some, I know Emily's made, and we've learned from our mistakes. So our, our role in the DHB is to educate the young, the younger physicians or the physicians who want to make pivots or changes to not fall for the same pitfalls that we did. Uh, because let's face it, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit us if we don't educate the ones coming up behind us on how to navigate certain waters. So I think it's, it's a great program. I, as far as I know, it's only one of its kind. And if, this, if, if our program could get incorporated into, into med schools and dental schools across the country, I think it would be a game changer for our industries in order for us to, to create uh, a stronger, uh, uh, especially more business savvy, you know, um, professionals, because that's where the world is heading. We uh, don't forget medicine is a business without the patients. We can't keep the lights on. And in order to get the patients, we have to meet them where they are. And the majority of them are moving into social media. Yeah. Well, those, uh, those are great lines there that you're, that you're sharing. And yes, I totally agree. It's uh, I know, for a fact that it is the only uh, one of its kind. <laughs> of its kind, and yeah. Yes, and because it, it it comes from that feeling of you know collaboration, and then yes. also because uh, you know between me and Dr. Keanu Shah, and and we're not trying to take credits, but a lot of the faculties who are coming on are people that we personally know, um, the people that we personally trust, right? The people that we have <coughs> follow uh, and and understand that they have the same vision. They. Mm -hmm. they, they have that um, servant heart that we know that, they, that we, as a group, we're going to make a difference uh, because education is a business also. It right? is. A, a, everybody knows. 
um, education with a mission, and in this case, education to really make a change is, mm -hmm. is super important. And that's what we're after. We, we want the change and we are the change, right? We, we make the change. We're not going to wait for someday to add another year to professional school trying no. to teach business, yes. right? We, we, we distill the, the, the challenges, the important things about running a business and we're offering it on this um, online format. So, yeah. um, and, and don't forget, this is not like an MBA. This is actually, uh, it's actually a real world business. This is because I know some right. people may be saying, "Oh, I'll just get an MBA online." This is not like an MBA. These are this is actually curated, curated content based on actually running a practice. This is right. things that doctors and dentists have done that has been successful and also not successful that we are gonna you know, gonna, gonna, gonna show and teach. So it's not like an MBA program. I know some people may be thinking, oh, I'll just get a bachelor's in, in business administration. Right. Not the same, not yeah, the some same. People, MBA some... programs don't teach you how to run a business. You get the basics, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking them. You get the basics on it. But when you're in practice, you want to know about p &Ls. You want to know about, you know, leveraging your time. You want to know about bringing in more clients. You know, you want to stay up and current. And this is what the DHB is about. Yes, and, and it's not a DBA either because there's also that kind of equivalent mm. <clears throat> excuse me, degree where they're teaching you the doctor, the business administration, and that's not, that's not what we're doing. We, we're talking nope. specifically healthcare. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about insurances. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about telehealth. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to talk about uh, what to do when the patient wants to sue you. You know, that kind of, that kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. those, those kind of real world things. Real world, that, yes that the school may have touched on it because obviously they don't want to discourage you. They don't want to scare you. And obviously an MBA will not, will never address that. So no. thank you so much for your time, Dr. Morris. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and I hope everybody well. enjoy. Yeah, thank you. I hope everybody enjoyed this talk. I know we've shared a lot of nuggets. Um, have a great rest of the weekend and join us again in, in a little bit to uh, listen to Dr. Nathan Ho, who will be talking about, uh, you know, your online reputation. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.